Chris Marzella here at the Hydro Arena in Glasgow, Scotland, and I'm now being joined by a man whom, without none of this would be possible. I'm joined by Campbell McLaren. Campbell, welcome to Scotland. I know you're uh, you're no stranger to the to the country, so tell us a little bit about your your history with Scotland. I know you've got a, a lot of connections. Just tell us a little bit about it. Well, I don't think we have time for me to list all my cousins and all the family that are here, but. Uh, you know, I, I think of myself as very Scottish. Uh, I went to primary school here, and my dad was in the RAF. Uh, and I lived in a wee town called Cowie, which uh, most Scots don't even know, but it's next door to Bannockburn. So uh, the, the place is very familiar to me. And even after we uh, moved to the U.S., uh, you know, my mom still served mints and tatties, and there was always a care package coming from home. And, uh, you know, we get Cadbury's and all the sweeties. And, and so when I come here, it feels very, very familiar. I've lived in the U.S. for a long time now, but Scotland seems like home. So how old were you when you first left Scotland to go to the, the U.S.? So I was seven. So I was, a, I was a little boy. So, I mean, a lot of the times, I mean, people can come back to their country feel that emotional attachment obviously with you it's strong you're back here now for the UFC a lot of people don't even realize you're the guy that, that started that you helped build it tell us a little bit about the, the creation of the UFC and how, how you got involved with that yeah well I, I, I do want to add I told my wife that if Scotland ever declared its independence we would move <laughs> back so she did have a nervous moment here for a while uh, but how, how did the UFC start you know it's one of those things where there, there, a lot of people were involved, notably Horion Gracie, you know, with the Gracie Challenge, and notably Art Davey, who was his business associate. Uh, and then, you know, I worked at a very big media company called Bertelsmann, BMG, where I was in charge of developing pay-per-view ideas. And when I heard about the Gracie Challenge, and Art Davey said the Gracies would fight anyone, anywhere, anytime, I thought that was uh, pretty interesting. And, of course, uh, one of my favorite endeavors was a video game called Mortal Kombat. And I really thought the UFC w was a reality version of that. And, um, you know, what you have to do is put yourself back into the 90s when almost all of culture was overblown. The music was a bunch of hair bands and there was, uh, the movies were very slick and everything was very overdone. And I think the UFC, and particularly the way the Gracies handled themselves, it cut through all the nonsense and it became reality. So reality TV was starting about that time and extreme sports were starting about that time. So the UFC really was extreme reality TV. So did you have any reservations then before the, the first ever UFC? Did you have any concerns that, you know, it might not win kind of public favor? Oh, no, 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 no. Did I have any concerns? Yeah, it was a scary endeavor yeah. to more or less create a sport, launch it on TV in front of what you hope were, if not millions of people, hundreds of thousands of people. So there was a lot of anxious moments. But there was at no point did I ever think it wasn't going to be a hit. I mean, it's just too much fun. It's too amazing. I mean, it's a visual spectacle like none other, right? It doesn't. It looks totally different than everything else you see. And remember, in in the old days before the martial arts were mixed, you had a boxer, you had a sumo, you had a man in a karate gi, you had uh, Hoist in his jujitsu gi. Uh, Chris Leninger wore the blue judo gi. You know, it was visually very, very arresting. Uh, and I don't think there was ever any point where I didn't think it was going to be a massive hit. So you see now the, the the scale that things are on with the UFC, mixed martial arts in general. I mean, did you ever envisage that it would become this this big? No, I I think I think you know a lot of the creative elements in the UFC are are, are my work either directly or I contributed to them, and those include the octagon and of course Joe I brought in Joe Rogan in UFC 11 and Joe Silva who you know is still the chess master for the UFC and a lot of those elements were very much still look like my UFC I think what Zufa what Lorenzo and Dana have done absolutely brilliantly is turned it into a world class sport and that I can't say I honestly envisioned but to see this on par with football uh, with any other world sport. It's just, it's remarkable. And the level and quality of these athletes is, is, is astounding now. We had such a mixed bag because there, were, there, there wasn't the professional setup that there is now. So we were taking people that some of them might not have deserved to have been there in terms of their athletic prowess, 
their heart was all there. And now what you have is these incredible athletes on the most elite level. And that's staggering to me. And I, I'm still, I see that and I'm still, look at, you know, the McGregor uh, Mendez fight, you know, and you see at the end of that fight how those men act and the way they respect each other. That goes back to the early days of the UFC. But now this elite class of athletes, is, it's very different. It's spectacular. You see the things that Dana White, the Fertitta brothers have done with the UFC. I mean, does that make you proud? Do you maybe regret a little bit that you're no longer involved with the UFC? Well, one, there's not much use to regret in life. So I don't regret very much I've done. Uh, but I'm so proud of the UFC. I, see, I do think of it... I'm here in Scotland with my two sons, with Ian and Campbell, and I do think of the UFC as another one of my sons. You know, I really do think of it as mine, even if I have no stake in it financially uh, these days, and if I have no uh, uh, professional connection to it, but I still do look at the UFC, and I'm so proud. So uh, I'm in awe of what Dana and Lorenzo have accomplished. Uh, but I'm, 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 I'm glad, and it makes me, again, I just, it's proud. I see the billboards in Times Square, and I think, ah, oh, it's amazing. It's great stuff. What, what kind of a relationship do you share then with the guys at Zufa, the Fertitas, Dana? I mean, are you in touch, touch with them on a regular basis still? No, oh, absolutely. I'm here as Lorenzo's guest in Scotland, which I greatly appreciate. And uh, Dana and I will talk to each other. And uh, a few years ago, uh, I gave Lorenzo uh, a laminate, uh, the VIP all-access pass from the first UFC, which I know he didn't have in his collection. And uh, I was featured as a cartoon figure in uh, a U.S. magazine called Mad. Uh, and I gave Dana a page from the original artwork. So uh, they've been very good to me. Uh, of course, at the UFC 20th anniversary, we're all together. And, uh, yeah, I stay in touch with them. It's, you know, that's uh, the Pope. You, you've got to go and kiss the ring. It's great stuff. So we're here in Glasgow for the first ever UFC on Scottish soil. I mean, that's got to make you feel unbelievable, right? Uh, it's amazing. It's really amazing. I, I do want to say, isn't McGregor a Scottish name? It is a Scottish, is a name, Scottish yeah. name. So I, I, I do think he is representing, you know, Celts in general. Uh, uh, it's wonderful to be here in Scotland. I love coming to Scotland. The fact that I'm here at the UFC, I really haven't taken I, I feel I haven't taken it all in yet. You know, it's just too much. There's too many emotions. So looking ahead to tomorrow night's show, we do have a few of our own Scottish talent on the fight, uh, on the the card, a few other British and Irish fighters. Mm -hmm. what, what are you expecting from the crowd tomorrow night? Oh, I, I think it's going to be ridiculous. I mean, I was in Dublin when uh, Connor fought there last. And, you know, I don't think the Scottish are any better behaved than the Irish. So I'm expecting, you know, a great, great show from the audience tomorrow. And I, I want to see Joanne fight. I think she's terrific. Uh, Stevie's wonderful. He's terrific. I want to see him live. Joe Duffy, I want to see how that goes. Michael Bisming's a great fighter, too. I just don't associate him with Scotland. <laughs> he is here, and I will enjoy watching him fight. So, I mean, do you have a, a favorite Scottish fighter? I think Joanne, I think, or Stevie. I, I, I don't know. I'm partial to the women because when I was doing the UFC, we didn't have women fighters, so it's still very new to me. And uh, I'm doing something now called Combate Americas, which is a, a Hispanic uh, uh, MMA franchise. So it is made literally for the Spanish fight fans in the U.S. And uh, the Spanish fight fans, their martial art really is boxing. So I feel like I'm introducing a whole new sport to a whole new group of people there as well. And I think that's what women have done as well in the fight business, particularly Ronda. They brought in a whole new group of fans that maybe wouldn't have paid this attention. So I, I do like to see the women fight. And, you know, what's interesting is I, I, I haven't been to that many UFC weigh-ins because if you remember, when I was doing the UFC, we didn't have weight classes <laughs> for a lot of the time. So a weigh-in is still uh, fairly novel for me at the UFC. So you touched on Combat America. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. That's obviously your new pet project. Well, I, I hope it's more than a pet project. Uh, I'm in business with uh, NBC, which is a huge American TV network, uh, with DirecTV and uh, uh, um, a number of people like uh, Major League Baseball and Creative Artists Agency are owners in the company. Uh, we've been doing it for two years. Last year, our reality series won 
uh, Best Reality Series Award, uh, the Hispanic Emmys, uh, Imahin Awards. Uh, this year we go on live September 17th, the day after Mexican Independence Day from Las Vegas. Uh, I think we've got some great new fighters. Joe Silva said he's tracking them already. Um, and I think you'll see a different style to it. You know, MMA is a style. UFC is a style of fighting now. It doesn't mean it's the only style of fighting. Uh, and I think what you'll see with uh, the Combate Americas fighters coming out of more of a boxing tradition, I think you'll see more of the boxing uh, techniques brought into it. And obviously the UFC are now expanding. We saw them go to Mexico City. Is that competition for Combate America? Is that, I mean, what, what do you view the UFC as in, in Mexico? Um, well, Chris, keep in mind, this is a, it's, culturally it's a little hard to explain this. There's 60 million American Hispanics in the U.S., 60 million people that consider themselves Hispanic or speak Spanish. That's a country in and of itself. So Mexico, Colombia, Venezuela, they're, they're out of my reach. I'm targeting Americans, American fans, right? Hispanic. You know, uh, uh, there's a Canadian MMA journalist uh, that's fairly well known. I don't want to embarrass him, Ariel Helwani. But he asked me if I was targeting Latin America. And I said, you know, Ariel, there's three times as many American Hispanics as are there are Canadians. So this is a big group in and of itself. I am happy to just reach out to this American group. Uh, the UFC is done amazing in Mexico. I think it might be more popular there than it is in Ireland. Talking off camera earlier, you're going to stick around to Scotland, do a little bit of sightseeing with, with the family. What's, what's on the, the itinerary? Well, you know, uh, I am a Campbell. My mother's family uh, were Campbells. So I like to go to Glencoe where my ancestors put on a great massacre that's still remembered fondly to this day. So we'll go to Glencoe, which is a favorite part of Scotland. We're going to be up in, uh, we're going to stay in Balahulish. We're going to go to Skye. So uh, my sons love Scotland too, and we're just going to tour around. We're going to be tourists there. I, I feel like a tourist here to a great extent, even as, though it's the UFC. It still, it feels funny to have it here in Scotland, uh, enjoyable, but a, but a little bit strange. So um, after the fight, we'll just continue to be tourists till I go back to the U.S. That's great with Campbell. Thank you very much for your time you, and enjoy the fights tomorrow night.